something that isn't usually said at a Quaker meeting. I am here because of the Pope. <laughs> How, you may ask? Well, picture this. A room in the Vatican decorated with frescoes as ornate and beautiful as the Sistine Chapel. His Holiness Pope Francis standing in the front, progressively shifting the Holy See's stance on nuclear weapons. The audience is filled, filled with ordained and lay people alike whose careers in peace and justice cannot be overstated. There are 11 Nobel Peace Prize laureates, dozens of cardinals and bishops, top officials from the United Nations and NATO, and diplomats, experts, and activists from around the world. Oh yeah, and then there's me. I was there as a part of a delegation of faculty and students from Notre Dame and other Catholic universities attending this major Vatican conference on nuclear disarmament in November of 2017. One of my peace studies professors had, was forming the delegation and I had successfully convinced him that despite no prior background in Catholic ethics nor nuclear policy, I deserved a spot on the trip. <laughs> Why was I so determined to attend this conference? It is likely because I am from East Tennessee and spent most of my childhood living less than 15 miles away from Oak Ridge, famously known for its enrichment of uranium during the Manhattan Project. Growing up near the so-called secret city and the modern day site that still manufactures nuclear weapons components, I had always felt particularly proud that the United States and my area of the country made history through its scientific advancements to develop the bomb before the rest of the world. I grew up seeing the extra edition of our local paper from August 6, 1945, that declared atomic super bomb made at Oak Ridge strikes Japan, still hanging as tribute on walls today. Influenced by this hometown pride, and as a member of the generation that has always lived in a nuclear world, I never questioned the existence and ethics behind the use of nuclear weapons. Because of that conference, for the first time in my life as a junior in college, I looked at the issue from a critical viewpoint. The conference inspired me through its sessions with top diplomats and advocates. But more than that, its over overarching message of the immorality of nuclear weapons challenged me. The Vatican had previously held that the use of nuclear weapons was immoral. At this conference, Pope Francis claimed that the mere possession of nuclear weapons, and therefore the strategy of deterrence, was immoral because of their potential to destroy the environment and cause mass civilian casualties. The conference forced me to take a step back and to consider the absurdity and immorality of nuclear weapons. Listening to many of the delegates from Europe and South America in particular, I came to recognize that the United States as a country is unusual both in its accepted reliance on our nuclear arsenal and in its deeply embedded militarism. Through mainstream beliefs such as nuclear weapons are the bedrock of US freedom and democracy, to everyday offhand comments like he went ballistic, totally nuclear, most Americans usually do not even realize the affinity we have towards nuclear weapons. When President Trump threatens North Korea with his quote, much bigger and more powerful nuclear button, why don't more Americans re realize he is threatening to annihilate hundreds of thousands of civilians? While maybe we pay a few more seconds when the current president says something like this, the fact of the matter is every president for the past 75 years, from Trump and Reagan to Obama and Kennedy, have threatened to kill millions of civilians across the world by basing America's security on a threat to use nuclear weapons. Washington and most of the foreign policy establishment call this deterrence. I believe we should call it nuclear extortion. Whatever we call it, it is wrong. It takes no concern over what is actually being threatened to serve US interests, nor the impact it would have on human life. I've heard a person that I love state, quote, we can just turn North Korea into a parking lot. And another that I deeply respect, respect lecture me that, quote, nuclear deter deterrence isn't immoral because no one has died from it. The first scenario ignores the hundreds of thousands who would die in the making of that nuclear parking lot. And the second scenario ignores the suffering of the hundreds of thousands who have died 
in Hiroshima and Nagasaki and because of nuclear tests across the world. I don't believe that these people made such statements out of a total disregard for the deaths of innocent civilians. Rather, they were influenced by their subconscious acceptance of deterrence as a necessary political tool for American security. I also cannot ignore it that these statements were made by older white men, the demographic that has not so coincidentally always dominated the conversation around nuclear weapons. Current nuclear policy st stands on foundations of racism, imperialism, and toxic masculinity. If older upper middle class white males continue to dominate the nuclear policy conversation, we'll also continue to have a conversation that ignores victims of nuclear war and testing and cares little to look at alternative models. In my view, deterrence is a short-term bid to escape long-term insecurity. Only diplomacy and relationship building can create lasting peace. And only non-conventional voices in nuclear policy, including women, people of color, victims, and youth, are likely to bring about such a change. This is what brought me to this field and here at FCNL. I felt called to contribute my younger feminist perspective by actively questioning to the conversation around nuclear weapons by actively questioning our assumptions about the stability of an international system based on deterrence. I hope that by pursuing a career in this field and sharing this perspective, I can contribute to the gradual cultural shift that is necessary to propel the United States towards true disarmament. I'm also under no illusion about the gravity of this aim. These are long goals, but as FCNL's first executive secretary, E. Raymond Wilson said, and this quote was on my desk the first day that I got there and it inspires me to include it in here. We ought to be willing to work for the causes which will, be not, which will not be won now, but cannot be won in the future unless the goals are staked out now and worked for energetically over a long period of time. After all, what's that old saying about the city where the Pope lives? I'm proud to be part of such an organization that is staking out such necessary goals and placing our daily energy into such work. Thank you.